<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right, so check it out, man. I'm in the Outer Banks, like I told you guys on that post. I'm enjoying a nice little vacation. But this freaking Eagles game that just happened on Sunday is just eating away at me from the inside. It just really is. So I got to get some things off my chest. I was just listening to Mike Missanelli and some other guys talk about some things. And I, I, I just got to get my perspective on a couple of things that happened. A couple of things that I honestly cannot even believe or fathom. Shit, I got cars behind me. I'm, look at this, man. I'm, I'm risking my life out here to make you guys a YouTube video, bro. All right, check it out. The Eagles tie. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. The Eagles tie the Bengals. Tie the Cincinnati Bengals. And we're going to get into Doug, Doug Peterson and uh, what he did at the end of that game and how pathetic Carson Wentz was and all those things. But I want to start out by saying this. We need to stop being shocked by these losses. You know what I'm saying? I'm listening to these announcers. I'm listening to all these people on the radio say, how could you do this? How could you lose to the stinking Bengals? How could you lose to the pathetic Cincinnati Bengals? When are Eagles fans going to realize we are the Cincinnati Bengals? We are that team. We're 0-2-1. We are trash. We are garbage the, the 2020 Philadelphia Eagles are not a good team it's time to accept it it's time to stop with this oh my god I can't believe we lost to the Washington football team I can't believe we tied the Cincinnati Bengals I can't believe we're playing so trash the team is trash it's old 2017 is over we were the oldest team in the league last year we did nothing to change it we didn't draft a linebacker we didn't draft a defensive end we didn't do anything to change how the team looked last season this team is not good, so stop it. We're in the same category now as the Cincinnati Bengals, as the Cleveland Browns. We're in the bottom, bottom, bottom of the NFL. The bottom five trash teams in the NFL, we're one of those. That's reality. It's time to accept it. <sighs> now, Doug Peterson, and I said it, the first After the first game, I said this. I mean, I said it last season. I wasn't impressed the season before that. I don't think he's a good coach. I think the guy is a fucking moron. I really do. I really just watch his decisions. Just watch every single decision he makes. I don't think, I don't think he knows what he's doing. But listen. Here's what I want to say about coaching in the NFL. And, and, and it's, it's the same thing with Brett Brown in the NBA. I think, I think the guy's a fucking idiot. I don't think coaching a professional sports team is that complicated. I really don't. I don't think you have to be some kind of mastermind to coach professional athletes. I think coaches that keep it simple and don't overcomplicate everything are the best coaches. I think I could find a guy in Philly who knows his stuff, who watches football every Sunday, who could coach his team better than Doug Peterson. I think these people get in these positions by who they know or what they've done. The fact that he played backup quarterback or played quarterback for two games or whatever during his Eagles career, th those kind of things get these people in these positions. That doesn't mean they know what they're doing. You understand? Then this coach who has no clue what he's doing has a good offensive coordinator in 2017, has a good staff around him, and they win the Super Bowl, and everybody that wins the Super Bowl leaves, and now he's trash again because he was never good in the first place. Let's talk about the game. I, uh, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. He abandons the run towards the end of the first half. Miles Sanders starts the game out with, what, three carries for 47 yards? And then he doesn't go back to that. And then he finishes the half totally lopsided again. It's just shades of Andy Reid. But let's just skip right to the end of the game because it, that's what everyone's talking about. This dude, in overtime, 
punted the football. I don't think I've ever seen that in my life. I don't think I've ever seen a team accept a tie. I don't think I've ever seen a team with 19 seconds on the clock or 26 seconds, whatever it was, say to themselves, all right, you know what? We can't do anything right here. We're going to punt the ball and hope for a tie. And the people that are defending it are defending it for one reason. They're saying it's better in the standings for you to have a tie instead of a loss. And when it comes to the end of the season, you can maybe squeak into the playoffs because somebody else has a, has a loss on the record and you have that tie. Guess what? I don't want to watch this team in the playoffs. Are you fucking kidding me? You think I want to watch a playoff team because we snuck into the playoffs because we tied the Bengals? You guys let me know in the comments, man. You guys let me know. Are you happy with that? Do you want to get to the end of the season and be like, yay, we snuck into the playoffs because we tied the Bengals? I would rather be 0-3 trying to win the game than to give up, punt the ball in overtime, and accept a tie. That is just pathetic. This is supposed to be a coach that's aggressive, a coach that has balls and isn't scared of anything, goes for it on fourth and five inside his own 30-yard line two weeks ago, and now in overtime against the Bengals who have a rookie quarterback, we're going to punt the football? I, w I was listening to this as I was driving down here to the beach. I wanted to drive my car off a bridge. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. That's not Philly at all. Philly's supposed to be nitty-gritty, tough. We don't punt the ball in overtime. We'd rather back Carson Wentz up and throw the ball and try to win the game and go 0-3 if it's unsuccessful. I'm happier with 0-3 trying to win than 0-2-1 punting the ball in overtime. You fucking pussies. That's so fucking pathetic to me How, that, 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 that Doug Peterson did that. That is so pathetic and sad. He, I hope he, he, must, he, he had to have lost respect among a lot of people with this. You just came across as a fucking little sissy bitch punting the fucking ball in overtime against the Bengals. It's pathetic. Carson Wentz, six interceptions in three games. He only had seven interceptions the entire season last year. He has six in three games. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. He's missing easy throws for an NFL quarterback. He's missing easy throws. Wide open, wide open Miles Sanders down the sideline. Miss. Zach Ertz, one on one, should be back shoulder. Throws it right to the defender. Throws an interception right to a linebacker. Joe Burrow looked more experienced and, and posed and poised than Carson Wentz did. Carson Wentz is out there looking like a rookie because he's in his own head. That's why. He's in his own head. He's not playing his game the way he played in 2017. If the injury ruined his career, so be it. But I want to say this about Jalen Hurts because, you know, here comes the Jalen Hurts crowd. Put in Jalen Hurts, put in Jalen Hurts. doesn't work that way. All right, if the team's falling apart from the inside out, the offensive line is old. Jason Peters is 99 years old. People are out here, oh, Jason Peters stunk it up this game. Jason Peters had a bad game. No shit, he's 37. Are you kidding me? Who brings back a 37-year-old lineman and then is all shocked when he sucks it up? You got to be shitting me. You honestly have to be shitting me. You have to be. You re-signed a 37-year-old lineman, and we're all shocked that he sucks. You can't throw Jalen Hurts in here. The team's falling apart from the inside out. They're old. They're slow. They're just not good. Throwing that dude in there, and he's going to get his ass kicked the same way Carson Wentz is getting his ass kicked. It's going to ruin his confidence, whatever else. Now you betrayed Carson Wentz. Now you got a whole fucking issue, and you still suck. So you can't do that. Doug Peterson said pregame or during the week that we're going to have to rely on J.J. Ortega-Whiteside a lot more this week with Jalen Rager being out. Where was he? Where was Whiteside? At all. Did you see him? Did anybody see him? I didn't see him. I didn't see Whiteside. I don't even know if he had a catch. I didn't look at the stats. I didn't see no J.J. Ortega-Whiteside. The guy stinks. It's a bad draft pick. Give it up. He sucks. 
You're better off signing a free agent somewhere. You're better off, I, I'd rather have 42-year-old Terrell Owens than Ortega Whiteside right now. He's terrible. Deshaun Jackson, hurt. Always hurt. Why? He's 34 years old. Stop it with these old guys, man. 2017 is over. 2010 is over. The last time Deshaun Jackson played a full season. These guys are old. Stop it. I saw somebody on Twitter that said Alshon Jeffrey. Oh, well, we're going to get Alshon Jeffrey back. And the last time he played a healthy season, he had this, this, and this. Yeah, the last time he played a healthy season, he was 29 years old. What makes you guys think these dudes are going to come back and be healthy? They're old. Stop it. Stop it. I'm tired of the 34-year-old wide receivers. I'm tired of the 37-year-old offensive linemen. I'm tired of this team. That's it, man. That's it. That's all I got. This team stinks. It's over. It's time to rebuild from the inside out. It has to start with fire and Howie Roseman because he has no idea what he's doing in the draft. Doug Peterson, I don't give a fuck that he won a Super Bowl. Listen to me clearly. Look at me closely. Look at my mouth. Read my lips if you're not listening to the volume. I don't give a fuck that he won a Super Bowl. They built a statue for this guy because Nick Foles called a play for him. It's over. The guy stinks. The team stinks. It's time to rebuild. I don't know if you rebuild around Carson Wentz. I say you take the rest of this season, see if Carson Wentz turns it around. If he sucks the whole rest of the season, maybe you rebuild around Jalen Hurts. But it's time to stop being shocked that this team's losing to teams like the Bengals, that this team's losing to teams like the Washington football team. They suck. This Eagles team sucks. It's not shocking anymore. We stink. We're in the bottom five of the NFL. 0-2-1. It's time to stop being shocked. We're not a Super Bowl contender. We're not a Super Bowl defending champion. None of that. It's over. Let me know what you think in the comments, man. DJ Eastwood. Run it back home in the most brutally honest Philly sports takes on YouTube. Some people don't like it, but it's because some people don't like the truth. Hit the like button if you like the truth. Hit the dislike button if you like lying to yourself. Now let me go enjoy the rest of my vacation.